where history really started with some foreigners who lived in the town who saw how bad the public schools were and they started getting involved in small ways and it just grew from there. We are mostly around in the north coast of the Dominican Republic. We have about 125 kids receiving the Young Stars, we have 250 kids in the camp and those are the older kids and then the preschooler kids we have 210 in the preschool upstairs, um, four classrooms and they go twice a day. So one of them in is, she mentioned about Bates, one of them is in a bate uh, behind uh, Puerto, near Puerto Plata, and that is obviously a community that's very heavy um, with the Dominicans of Haitian descent. It is very poor, is much I would say, noticeably poorer than where we are. Um, and we have had a preschool there. It was actually our original preschool, and it, so we've had a preschool there for six years, and it's very, very successful. Um, and to see these kids who a lot of them don't even have shoes walking in and in a Montessori classroom, and watching them manipulate the Montessori uh, materials and watching them be able to sort of be in control of their own learning is really inspiring. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of kids come to school hungry. There's a very large food component that's school. Well, the Montessori program, because I was working on it today, had, has like almost 100% attendance. Because we were doing some, some yeah, the, that's like the preschool program. So the parents do bring their kids to school and, they, and the kids, I think, want to come, but it's like a really, we were actually surprised at how high the attendance was. Um, it's much higher than what the public school attendance. They're probably ravaging like 70%. I think so. I, it depends on the family, and I think we have both. Um, for the most part, I mean, we try to involve, get the parents involved, and I think that the parents are very interested, and a lot of them value the education. But the reality of many families is that they will need kids at times to go and, you know, do whatever it is that they can to provide some kind of economic, you know, helps to the family. So. We've had kids who have been in the program, like the other day, I went around house visiting and looking for some kids that have been with us in the past that aren't here anymore, and then you find that some of them, you know, can no longer attend because they have to shine shoes or whatever it is, they have to help in the house or in the family. So that happens, and it depends, it depends on the family. But for the most part, parents have been very interested, or at least, you know, they come by here and, you know, they show interest in, in the center and their kids' education. huge racial tensions between Haitians and Dominicans here and based on this goes back into history and there's a lot of Haitian or second generation Dominican Haitians who have been born here who have lived here all their lives um, who might never have visited Haiti or speak Creole who are denied um, citizenship or legal paperwork parents were considered parents of transit when their parents were migrated to cut the sugar cane so now um, there are a lot of kids who are born here without documentation. And like we were talking about high school, you can't graduate from high school unless you have documentation. So a lot of kids have denied this um, education. So this is actually one of my biggest passions and like, I don't know, I believe it's definitely a human rights violation and it's something that I would definitely like to see changed. As far as every day in the classrooms, you see it all the time. Like we have Asian kids, we have Dominican kids. Definitely one of our focus, I mean, it's been a theme in summer camp and it's something we're doing Young Stars. We try to, um, we learn about both cultures and we talk about unity and we talk about ways that kids can, you know, get past this racism and actually help the community um, do it as well. 